Hi, this is Bob Samuels, founder of Tech Connector. Tech Connector is a marketplace and campaign management platform of best of breed account based marketing lead generation solutions. We've partnered with the Serious Decisions Summit to bring you wisdom from leading account based marketing thought leaders. To that end, I'm happy to introduce you to Leslie Allor, Director of Regional Marketing at Iron Mountain. Leslie is a strategic marketing leader with a strong marketing technology knowledge and a passion for driving measurable business results. Leslie, it's a pleasure to speak with you. How are you today? I am doing great. I'm looking at the beautiful Mediterranean Sea from the south of France. I am so jealous. I, I think that's awesome. Actually, send pictures if you can. So um, thank, you for the, thank you for sharing your time uh, with us. And I wanted to um, start by, if you can give a little bit of a background, you know, what, what, what's your perspective as far as ABM and B2B marketing optimization? Where, where have you been? What have you seen? Where are you, uh, what, what's your perspective? Yeah, sure. So um, my perspective hasn't wavered a whole lot since the uh, hashtag ABM trend emerged a few years ago. And um, from, from my point of view, ABM is really a foundation of B2B marketing. In fact, if you're not doing account-based marketing, you're probably missing a tick when it comes to B2B because um, that's just the nature of the business we're in. Yes, that makes sense. So um, you you have a different different roles in in, uh, in marketing. You you you're a marketer yourself. You're you're a consultant. Um, what are yeah, some that's of the right. So, that um, you're bringing? sure. Uh, well, I've I've been fortunate to see uh, the marketing evolution and the technology evolution from many different angles. Um, I'm currently leading a demand marketing team based in Europe. Uh, I came in right at the introduction of GDPR and all the work being done in the year leading up to that going live. Um, I previously was leading a global marketing operations team. So um, in that role, I was responsible for implementing the actual technology stack that supported all of our marketing and demand strategies, including um, our ABM strategy. And um, on the side, as you mentioned, I also uh, take my my expertise on the road, and I do consulting with um, other other B2B organizations who are looking to um, bring best-in-class marketing automation, marketing operational processes, uh, measurement and strategies to really optimize their technology stack and demand for revenue generation. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, and when we talked earlier, you, you, you mentioned, which I think is, it, it, it can't be overlooked, is the importance is um, the planning and the uh, you know, upfront work involved with an ABM campaign. It's not a matter of just going out and buying some ABM tools. No, you're totally right. So um, account-based marketing is really a strategic approach to demand generation, which means you need to do a lot of homework. Uh, working with your sales team, understanding the the companies they're going after in their book of business, doing market research to understand the market opportunity, to really hone in on an understanding of who are you going after, specifically the companies, but also who within those companies are the people that you're most likely to be engaging. And you, you need to understand the key attributes and triggers uh, and, and narrative that will captivate the attention of those audiences. And that all, all of that homework needs to come before you start putting campaigns out the door or buying a bunch of technology. Because at the end of the day, um, the technology that you bring into your organization should be supporting your strategy, uh, not driving it forward. Very good. So a lot of the planning is figuring out who you want to talk to and what do you want to, what are going to be the key messages you want to be presenting. Yeah, that's exactly right. And and in reality, uh, you know, all B two B marketing is essentially that. Really, all marketing is, uh, you know, talking to the right people with the right message at the right time. And ABM is just a fine tuned approach to that. Uh, the other the other benefit of account based marketing is it can help marketing organizations better align to their sales partners. Um, I'm a big believer that um, marketing is an incremental 
uh, revenue generating function within a business, which means that um, we, we don't just serve sales, but we absolutely need to be aligned to sales because no deal is done without their involvement. So uh, showing that your marketing is being positioned in front of the target audience that they're going after and ultimately driving leads that you give to the sales team that's in the book of business they want to talk to uh, will only go to serve you and the sales team. Yeah. Okay. Um, beautiful. And so as far as messaging goes, that, that's one that seems to be challenging because there's no real technology or software or anything that can help you figure out what your messages are. The, the, the company really needs to figure it out for themselves. Well, yes. So there's there's a few approaches to this, right? So the uh, the traditional approach is good old fashioned market research, and that's really important. But it can take a long time and cost a lot of money to commission research and and then get all of that back and then craft a new messaging. Uh, narrative and put it into the market, um, which is still something that you should do. But supplemental to that, nowadays there are technology that almost serve as real-time market research validation through tools like um, intent monitoring. So if you look at um, a, a piece of technology that is monitoring uh, search terms and topics that people are using in, in the real world to find information, ultimately resulting in them buying what they're seeking, uh, that can go a long way to help you understand how to craft the messages to the audiences that you're going after. Makes sense. Makes sense. So um, how, do you, how have you seen the um, coordination and, and uh, collaboration with sales working and, and uh, who takes the lead and, and making sure that everybody gets the buy-in? So um, it's kind of a it's kind of a two way street. You need to have a really strong relationship with sales and and show them, educate them on your marketing strategy and your approach, so they understand and they believe in what you're trying to do. So when you ask them to do things like verify a target account list or provide a target account list. Uh, they're they're much more likely to be responsive um, because we know our sales teams have a lot on their plate and sometimes it can be hard to get their share of attention. Uh, similarly, you you probably need to think about how much information you actually uh, show to the sales team. So uh, one of one of the learnings that I had early on when I started working with intent data was it sounded like a really cool, exciting idea to show all of the intent topics and all of the signals and all of the activities to, to the salespeople because the thinking was, oh, they'll look at this whole list of things that they've been doing through um, you know, our behavioral data tracking and our marketing automation system that we've passed to their CRM and the list of, in, of intent signals and topics that we've captured, and they'll use this to craft this brilliant um, uh, message when they go to call the customer. The reality is that that's information overload and they, they don't do that. If you give them a couple of points that they can use, they will. Um, well, some will. But, um, you know, resist the temptation to put every bit of technology and every nugget of information um, uh, right in front of your sales team. Instead, use it to trigger very intelligent marketing. So by the time the elite is qualified and gets to that salesperson, the original intent uh, topics and signals won't really matter as much because they've worked their way further on through your nurturing and your journey. Um, then you can just show sales that. All right. Okay, very good. So um, as far as the, the identifying the target accounts and so forth, um, what's, what's the best approach? I guess, sales, like you said, sales will, will come up with their idea of what they want to target. Marketing probably has their ideas. Um, and, then a matter of, and then it's a matter of uh, who within the company, because it's not just one buyer. There's a whole committee, if you will. So how do you, how do you figure out all that? Yeah, that's right. So um, it, it's a similar a similar concept. Um, you know, you should always be using data to determine who your target audience is, not just what the companies are, but who. Um, 
you can use your own company data, look at the people associated with your opportunities in your CRM, the people that um, are having the most conversations with sales, who sales is, is having success with, um, look at the look at the demographic in, indicators of those people and use that as a baseline to identify who you should be going after. Um, and and you can use third party data to then look to see, okay, what are the watering holes of these types of people, right? Because um, you can un, you can get intent data at a firmographic level. It's harder and harder, especially with data privacy laws, to get that kind of data on an individual level. But what you can get from um, at, at a demographic level to understand like job titles, functions, and, and your general persona indicators are things like where are they going to consume their information? Are they active in social media? Are they going to um, a web-based publication? Are there popular, popular um, conferences and events that they go to? Um, so it, again, going back to, it requires a little bit of upfront homework and some elbow grease, but um, that level of understanding in your target audience is absolutely critical to successful marketing and successful account-based marketing. Makes sense. And then uh, the, I suspect the messaging needs to be different depending on the different types of people that are involved in the, uh, on that committee. Uh, some of them will be interested in security, others will maybe be more interested in price and efficiencies. And so uh, the, the messaging has to be crafted differently for each one of those folks. Yeah, that's exactly right. And this is where you get into that concept of personalization. And when some people hear personalization, they think you get to a page and it says, hi, Leslie, uh, we know that at Iron Mountain, your CEO, Bill Meany, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. In my opinion, that is a little bit overkill. Um, again, going back to we are in the day of increasing data privacy regulation and people are becoming more and more sensitized to how their personal data is used. That degree of personalization in a business context is probably not necessary and in some cases might actually do you a disservice. Um, however, understanding the message and orienting it by using things like dynamic content on your website and your emails that um, that hone in on even just a flavor of your message more appropriate based upon who the persona is can really resonate with people. Beautiful. Um, and you mentioned privacy. So that's a big deal. So GDPR Castle and now the California CCPA and, and Massachusetts. Uh, what does this all mean? I mean, because this, this is where it gets tricky because the beautiful thing is we're living in, a, in an age now where we've got lots of data and lots of uh, really, really targeting capabilities, but then we have these constraints too. So how do you, how do you toe that line? Yeah, so um, I am one of those people who is a big fat fan of these data privacy laws, not because I personally have any illusion that any of my information is private. I'm, I'm just way too out there in the digital space for that. However, I do think that it is forcing marketers do better marketing. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of the old school ways of doing things where you just bought lists, sent mass emails, you know, used broad uh, advertising, you know, anywhere you could afford to put it. Uh, I, I think that's lazy marketing. And I'm, I'm really glad that uh, these legislations are almost forcing that that whole thing to go away. Um, however, this does mean that the way in which we think about marketing does have to change. Um, and it doesn't mean that we can't use um, data to create good customer experiences, it does mean that we have to think differently about how we do it. So ABM is probably more important now than it was before for two reasons. First of all, in a lot of these privacy regulations, including GDPR, if somebody is an existing customer of yours, that's legitimate business interest to reach out to them. So if you're in a business where you have the opportunity to cross sell to your existing customer base, your uh, account-based marketing programs targeted at your existing customers uh, just became gold to you uh, because going after new logo is harder and more expensive. 
when you're going after those new logo accounts, you're going to be doing a lot more inbound marketing. And because you are, so is everybody else, which means that people are going to become inundated with ads, which means that your targeting and your uh, thoughtful messaging matters even more. Makes sense. Makes sense. And then um, as far as the messaging and the channels, I, I think maybe you gave a clue before. Uh, when you know when you cheat, when you're figuring out which channels are the best channels to, for your outreach, I guess it makes sense to uh, use some of that listening that you did in the beginning uh, on the intent information to know what channels um, those those clients are going to for their their information. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're gonna have you're gonna have tribal knowledge within your organization that are gonna have a clue as to where where your buyers are going but you know with intent data and market research you can you can find that out it's also easier than ever with um, with tools that allow you to kind of um, place ads through um, through a brokered or a bidding situation to put a lot of different tests out there see what resonates see what resonates and then move your money around as appropriate. Um, so I'm a big fan of content syndication because you can create the content targeted towards your audience, define your target audience, including your target accounts, and then, you know, put it out there um, into, you know, a, a marketplace or bidding environment um, through a, a company like Integrate. And then the media publications that ha that think they have that audience and can make good on that on that content they raise their hand and they identify themselves to you and you just you get your content where it's going to be most effective and then you know move your money around when it's not working beautiful beautiful and and along the way like you said you're getting more information and intelligence as you go so um, you can continuously make improvements on both your messaging and your targeting as far as uh, as far as what's working and what's not. Exactly, which means having a process um, and the discipline to measure what you're doing and then pause and reflect upon your results is equally important. And sometimes as marketers, we get so caught up in doing and putting stuff out there, it's hard for us to slow down and, and reflect and say, okay, what's working, what's not working, why, and what do I need to adjust? Beautiful. So it's a continuous learning opportunity. That's really good. So um, you've seen some, and you've, you've either directly or indirectly been a part of uh, some successes on ABM. Are, is there any case studies you can share? Sure. So um, we we use uh, target account lists almost exclusively in uh, in channels like content syndication today. And by doing so, we've seen a dramatic increase in our conversion rate. And I think this comes from two things. One, I think it comes from the fact that the people that we're getting are people who are genuinely interested and appropriate for us to be, to be talking to and offering our solutions to. And uh, our salespeople are are converting them at higher rates just because it's who they want to be talking to. I mean, you can generate all the leads in the world, even if they're hand raisers. If salespeople is like, yeah, that's not really who I'm after, uh, and, and they don't follow up, then it's you know it's not really a good lead for your business. Um, so you know, we managed to increase our conversion rate such that about one third of all the leads we generate actually end up in the hands of salespeople. And uh, it, it, depending upon, you know, the, the where that is in our business, uh, particularly for our core business, we see uh, upwards of 60% of those actually closing to deals. Uh, so I, I think that that's pretty good for a channel like content syndication, which is relatively low cost, particularly for the volume. Beautiful, those are great numbers. And like you said, the uh, getting that buy-in up front from sales is huge, both both in buying into the program itself, and and you know they've got a vested interest on, in on the companies that you're going after. So it's a it's a it's a win-win. I'm not sure why it's, it would be contentious, but uh, I'm glad you know, it makes a lot of sense that everybody's everybody's tied into the same goals, the same targets, and all that. 
Exactly. And, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer in, in, you know, data and measurement, but there's also just the, uh, you know, qualitative aspect of having a good relationship with sales. And if they feel like, you know, we're all on the same page, uh, that, that makes for a much better day. Beautiful. So you mentioned integrate. Um, what other uh, tools, technologies have you uh, come across along the way that you find to be super helpful as far as ABM? Sure. So um, we have worked with Bombora uh, for for intent data. Uh, I, I mentioned Integrate. Recently acquired a company called Accrue, which is very interesting because um, we're we're going to be testing it out uh, to do on site lead capture that routes into our system in real time. For um, GDPR um, and these new data privacy laws, that's actually really significant for us because we'll be able to capture people's consent in real time on site, which is digital, which means it's defensible, and then we can um, get them verified into the system right away. Um, we, we lose, we actually only retain about 10% of our total event leads um, when we try to get consent after the fact, so that's huge for us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and on our website, we're um, using tools like Optimizely um, to optimize our website. And, um, you know, we're, we, we're foundationally an Eloqua and Salesforce.com shop. And actually, um, we started using Einstein with Salesforce. And we're seeing how that compares to Eloqua lead scoring, which is quite interesting. Um, so yeah, I mean a, a lot of a lot of technology, even even tools like Zoom nowadays, where where these webcasting platforms can become integrated right into your marketing automation system, so you so you can flow through your lead data in real time. Um, and if we're appending data from uh, systems like uh, DNB, so that we have as much information from a graphic information on every record that we can to enable further. ABM in the future, you know, all of this is part of a, you know, integrated tech stack that supports our overall strategy. Cool. So you've seen a lot of uh, change uh, over the years uh, on ABM as far as the, the tools, the privacy laws, um, the, the challenges and so forth. Where do you see ABM heading? What, what are we going to be looking at? A year from now and five years from now, what, what is what is going to be different? You know, um, the thing that I hope is different is that people stop talking about ABM like it's, you know, some sort of cool, new, fancy thing or, or you know, special strategy. I, I really think that it is, it is what B2B marketing is all about. So I hope it just kind of gets absorbed into the regular operating rhythms of B2B marketing organizations. And, um, you know, I do think that we will continue to see um, more and more uh, different technologies emerge that support ABM and other forms of B2B marketing in consideration of the data privacy laws. We, we have already started to see a, a shift away from outbound as a mechanism of initiating engagement and rather um, people, people using inbound strategies to try to attract the right audience. And it's interesting for marketers to, to really wrap their heads around the concept of, I have a target account list of the people I know I want. So why wouldn't I just go out to them? Um, and really, it's more and more, and I think in the future, it's going to be about know exactly who you want to attract. And then you know, the, the best marketing talent in the world will be able to master the ability to attract exactly those companies and people. Beautiful. Yeah, so ABM is not a separate program. It's, it's a philosophy. It's just part of everything that the marketer should be doing. That's my take on it. Makes sense to me. So that's beautiful. Um, I uh, This is wonderful uh, speaking with you. Is there any other um, words of wisdom or thoughts you have uh, before I let you go? I think you asked all the right questions and we, we pretty much covered it. Um, you know, I, I really look forward to hearing what your other guests uh, speak about and share as, as it relates to ABM. There's always 
more to learn and new um, new methods to try. So um, I hope we get to speak again. Beautiful. It's a pleasure. Go enjoy uh, France. And uh, thank you for sharing. And I look forward to speaking with you again soon. Au revoir. Au revoir. Thank you.